declaration of who he is. Come on, worship. Come on, give him praise. Then I ask the Lord, what name fits you? Just the congregation and we say, Can we do it one more time? As we just worship him tonight. Then I ask the Lord, what name fits you? And here's his response. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We love you above everything else. Nothing compares to our love for you. If we have nothing and we have you, we have everything. You are all encompassing. You are self-sufficient. You sustain everything, yet you are sustained by none. We bless you, our maker, our God and our King. We love you. We make our boast in you. We declare and let the ends of the earth hear that you are our God. And you, for that, the God that never fails. We bless you, Jesus. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I live. As long as I am Sunday, 
Realizing that the sacrifice is not just your words, it is you. The sacrifice is you.
that's that's the depth of worship it becomes personal it no longer becomes a song it becomes a personal confession a confession that is based on the conviction that you have of the one that you worship and lord we extol you we exalt you be lifted high be glorified even tonight blessed be the name of the lord blessed be the name of the lord in jesus name amen are we excited to be here all right just give god a shout and a clap of praise Hallelujah. Please take your wonderful seat. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Wow, such a wonderful thing to be in the presence of God. Amen. I pray that we don't lose the art of worship in the body of Christ. Amen. You may be compelled or instructed to do every other thing. But as far as worshiping your maker is concerned, it should be spontaneous. It should be something you do just as much as you breathe. I believe that worship is supposed to exist in a believer like how he or she exhales or inhales air. Amen? That's what we're created to do. And I bless God for the mercies of having his presence always with us again and again. In Jesus' name. Amen. How many of us have been blessed so far with the meeting? If I don't come up, if we end the service here, I think it was worth it. You see, and that's what I want every one of us to know. Every part of the service was deliberately packaged together to ensure that you are edified, that you are informed, that you are transformed, and that you are blessed as well. So it's not just... There is no special moment of the service. Every part of a pneumatic service is life-changing in itself. Amen? And it's important that when you come into the house of God, you pay rapt attention. How many of you listening to what Spiritivity did here? I'm telling you, they preached a message that would have taken me maybe two or three days. Amen? So make sure you pay rapt attention. God bless you. I mean, that was so awesome. Can we celebrate God for them? That was good. That was wonderful. Amen. That was so powerful. When they started, I didn't even know they were talking about money. I was lost at first. Amen. So when I heard one scripture, I said, yes, I know what they are saying. So ensure that you don't come late for any service. You'll be cheating yourself if you do. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. And God will glorify his name in jesus name amen and i also bless god for the testimonies they were powerful you know some of you um just give me a few minutes I, I think i need to do some enlightenment before we go to the business of the day i discovered that many of us have the character in fact it's an, a habit now of not sharing testimonies please it's not good let me tell you what the Lord told me while I sat there. The Lord said, every testimony celebrated is a miracle attracted. And then the Lord said, every testimony shared is a miracle sealed. You see, if God does, does something for you and you don't share the testimony, it's like a door that remains open. The enemy can come in. But when you share the testimony, the word of God has been fulfilled that we overcame the devil by the word of our testimony. Because when you share something that God has done, it is God that is glorified, not a man. Even if it's a man that spoke the word, it was God that spoke through him. Some of you will come to my house and share testimony. Send text to me. Don't share like that again. Come here. If you say you are too ashamed, friend, when it's time for testimonies, or before the testimonies when you come, give your name. Then when it's time to come out, look for your friend to escort you out. Amen? There are two, if you have stage fright. Are we together? So please, ensure we do it. Ensure we do it. Um, it's our custom here that whenever, as soon as every service starts, 
somebody is at the back waiting to get your testimony so as soon as you come you go back register your name and then get ready for when you will be called is that okay how many of you are going to be sharing your testimonies from now i know some of them did raise their no problem i understand you say no i was not convinced every testimony celebrated is a miracle attracted so if you are not sharing a testimony and other celebrate it in, I stopped working. I started business. Income didn't go down. It's something worth celebrating God in the midst of this devastating, dead, dry bone economy. You know, I, I read something on news and they said that there is a phenomenon in Nigeria that prices, the prices of things are always overcoming gravity. As they, they never come down. You understand? Please work on this. As they go up, they never come down. So in the midst of this kind of economy, if God is doing something for somebody, celebrate it. Shout as though you were the one. You understand? When you jump up and shout, the angel that was standing with them will locate you and give you your own miracle. Say amen. amen. I know you needed that to motivate you so that you will share testimony. Next Sunday, if you come here and I don't get testimony, I will come and point some people. Because some of you, I know you. You'll be sending me text message or you come to my house. Don't come to my house again. Say amen. And God will help us in Jesus' name. So are we set tonight? Now, tonight is, is going to be heavy and wonderful, exciting at some point, but really, really life-changing. Um, we are going to have an interview session shortly. All right? Um, what's the program again? KFS. Kingdom, Finances, and Entrepreneurship. Good. So the Lord gave me this idea that instead of just having teachings every session, let's have a forum where we can sit down and interact, okay? And um, God has blessed us with great minds, wonderful entrepreneurs that are doing great so that um, some things that are obviously limitations to us, you can ask them as questions and um, I trust the wisdom of God in them to be able to answer. Amen? Now, that will have saved us maybe three or four days of teaching. Are we together? So, we are going to have that. That's actually the heart of the program today. I just want to share a few things with us that God laid on my heart this afternoon. Probably to prepare the stage for what will be done next. Amen? And um, God will help us in Jesus' name. So, today, last week, we was a pre-summit and... Uh, we started talking about um, the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. Remember, it is kingdom finances. It's not just a program where we come and discuss how to make money. No, not just that. Okay? Yes, we come, we gather together to discuss opportunities, ways by which we can enter into what is our inheritance. And that is finances. Isn't it? The Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Understand that. Every financial and material blessing is your inheritance as a child of God. Is your right. And the earlier you understand that, the better for you. So that you can reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life. Did we get that? Yeah. So that's the reason why this program was put together. So that we trust God to supply wisdom on how we can go about this. If we are caught up in the... Um, the issue of poverty or deprivation of resources like unbelievers, then there is practically no difference between us and them. But there should be a system in the kingdom that warrants for our rising in the midst of this tumor in society. And that is what we will use to bring deliverance and salvation. The, fact, the Bible says that the first reason for the preaching of the gospel is for the poor. And I told you last week, that the best gospel you can preach to a poor man is that his days of poverty are over, right? Mm -hmm. And truly, there are people who will not listen to the gospel if they don't have food in their stomach. And you don't, you, it's not Bible you use to buy food, isn't it? So the Bible says, money answered all things. And it is true. Money answers all things. If there is money, this place will be air-conditioned. And you would like to come to church. Say Amen. And let me just tell you, the day you hear that we have our permanent site, whatever auditorium we are putting, come and see. It's a 
Did you? I said there will be split air condition. Yeah. So that you can pray well. You know, when you are praying in this heat, it will look like God is not answering your prayer. Recently, I've been running my generator all night. Amen. Anytime I put it on in the night, inside of me, I will say, I'm sorry to my neighbors, but you to go and get money. Say amen. Uh huh. Because if I don't own that gen, I can't pray. And if I don't pray, there is no way God can intervene on your behalf. So the gen has to be on. So you see that it is important that we talk about these things and secure ways by which we can enter into our possession. The Bible says the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Last week we spoke about the gospel of the kingdom and the real reason for why God wants to put resources in our hands. It is for the purpose of advancing the kingdom. Is that it? And I told you that there are three major things that a kingdom-minded believer or three major virtues that a kingdom-minded believer will work with. I said a kingdom-minded believer is sacrificial, is selfless, and is sold out. So you realize that if God owns you, God owns your resources. Amen? Yeah. I remember one time I, I traveled somewhere to preach and uh, it was time for offering. Amen? And I had just a thousand naira note. And because of my mentality of giving then, I felt I couldn't give all that one thousand because that was all the money I had. Those days, it was not easy. We would travel, we would be believing God on the road for our transport fare. Do you understand? You, have you gone on that kind of journey before? Or you travel and you not buy anything on the road and pretend you are fasting. You have not been there before. Ha, no wonder. That's why if you have suffered very well, you will be passionate about this finance thing. I remember one time I was traveling to just from here. I had to fast because there was no money. In fact, the money to go from the park in just there was nothing. So I converted it to fasting. And it's not every time you should convert hunger to fasting. You know, but God who is so kind touched the heart of two ladies on, in the bus and they insisted on buying me something. Say amen. Yes. No, I can never be stranded. Never. If you are around me, just know that you can't be stranded. I don't know. It's serious. It's just the grace of God. If I am in need of anything, God can raise anybody. Amen? So, when I put the 1,000, I had called the usher that, please, I'm putting 1,000. Change it for me. Return 500 after the service. That was when we went to Bill. And instantly, the voice of God came in my right ear. He said, son... Do you mean you can't give me everything? Then he asked me a question. He said, whose are you? I said, ah, I'm your property. I'm your own. Then he said, if you are mine, everything that belongs to you belongs to me. I just send the usher back and put the money. You know what? After that service, I got five times that amount. And we kept, money kept coming till we left. That was how I broke away from giving 100 naira, 200 naira to start giving thousands as offerings. Now, I shared that testimony so that some people's mentality can change this night. That is what it means to be kingdom-minded. You realize that all that God has blessed you with is for the purpose of his kingdom. So anything and anyone that is attached or given to the advancement of the kingdom and the furtherance of the gospel, you are in complete support of them. This is your qualification for you to have access into the knowledge and the wisdom that brings about kingdom finances and resources. If you don't have this knowledge, then you, are, there's no, you don't have any business here. Otherwise, whatever God gives you will make you more selfish. I hope I'm not insulting anybody. I'm just being practical. So that was what we said last week. And this week we decided that we will title the talk show creating opportunities and maximizing the um, potentials creating opportunities and maximizing potentials now that you've understood the place of the kingdom as number one and you are ready to enter into this thing about finance then we need to know how we can create opportunities by which we can come into resources the bible says that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings 
He said he has given us all things that we need that pertains to life and godliness. Listen to me. God will not provide anything for you again because he has already provided them. I've said before that there are two things God cannot do. You know, they say what God cannot do does not exist, but there are two things that God cannot do. It exists, actually. You want to hear my own portion? You are not answering, so I won't tell you. You want to hear what God cannot do? There are only two things that God cannot do. Well, three. Number one, God cannot lie. Number two, God cannot do for you what he has already done. In other words, God cannot provide for you what he has provided in Christ Jesus. And then number three, which is almost the same as number two. God cannot do for you what he has instructed you to do for yourself. Did you get me? My goodness, you are not answering me. Yes. So God will not do for you what he has already done in Christ. And God will not do for you what he has authorized you to do for yourself. So everything that we will need to exist on earth has been created, has been provided. That's the reason why the last creation was man. I'm not preaching, I'm just preparing a foundation for the talk show. The last creation was who? Was man. He created everything because God did not create man to hustle. God created man to, fa to have dominion. So everything is there, but man has the wisdom of God to manage the resources. So when we talk about creating opportunities, we are seeking ways of wisdom by which we can harness the hidden potentials in nature. The hidden potentials of wealth around us. You know that even mining started from the Garden of Eden. Mining, the mining industry, which is actually, you know, one of the most, um, 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 look, excuse me, lucrative side of, of riches, started from the Garden of Eden. The Bible says that the river that God used to water the garden parted into four heads. And one of those streams, as it flowed by its land, it created a hollow path. That exposed the gold that was inside. What was God telling man? That if you dig down, there are mineral resources you will find. That will help advance what you are doing on earth. So I believe that God has already done everything. But we need wisdom. And that's the reason why the Bible says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. These opportunities are created based on the wisdom and the capacity that God has imparted on us. And then also based on our willingness to take responsibility to see that we can harness the potentials in us to expose us to the availability of resources if you are with me say amen, amen. so that's why we titled it creating opportunities maximizing potentials now please quote for me psalms 23 one two go some people are chewing their mouth the, uh -huh. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. In the presence of my enemy. Stop. Thou preparest a table before me. Where? Did he say in the comfort of my home? Did he say in the supermarket? Did he say in my church, my local church? Did he say when I'm with my friends? Did he even mention the name of a city? Because many of us have this understanding of greener pastures. There's nothing like greener pasture. Greener pasture is in you. It's the wisdom of God that helps you to exploit it and bring it out. The Bible doesn't say the land where the righteous dwells shall prosper or flourish. It says the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Check how a palm tree grows. Anywhere you plant it, it will flourish. So the Bible says he prepares a table. Table speaks of provision. But he prepared it where? In the presence of enemies. I thought that God would have isolated it from the enemies so that you can enjoy 
But God is such a God that can create abundance of plenty in the midst of adversity. So, where you find the greatest opposition is where you will find the greatest provision. The greatest opportunities exist where risk is highest. That's why businessmen say no risk, no reward. Is that true? That's the reason why if you are afraid to tread on new grounds, you will never rise as far as wealth is concerned. If you are always looking for a comfortable job, you may never find that job. Because if it's a job that will pay you very well, it's a job that will make you work extremely hard. Are we together? Yeah. So, the greatest, you know, level of provision we can enjoy is in the midst of opposition. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence. So, the situation around may not be comfortable, may not be favorable, but that's where God has created the table. Notice he didn't say, thou preparest food. He said a table. Because it is on a table that food is placed. And everything that you will need to be nourished is placed on the table. And you have the responsibility of sitting on that table in the midst of opposition, in the midst of enemies. Sit down. Because sitting down is a position of dominion. Amen? Chapter 22, verses 29. It says, when there is a casting down, you will say what? Give it in New King James. Let me say this and in, in the next five minutes, we may be done. New King James, look at it. Okay, go back to 28 so us can understand. Can understand, get the context. You will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. We like this one, isn't it? Next verse. When they cast you down, you say what? Exaltation will come. But you are saying that, you are making that statement when? In your downtime. You see, that's why we, during the series of faith, I told you, you don't say what you see. You say what you want to see. That's why the Bible says you shall decree it in and it shall be established. And the light will shine. That light can be anything. It can be prosperity. It can be a new job. It can be anything. But that light will not come until you learn to declare. Then this verse says, when they cast you down. In other words, in the midst of setback. That's when God is ready to lift you. And that's the problem many Christians have. Every time God allows setbacks to come to us or challenges to come to us, we shy away in fear. So when God is putting in your heart to start a business or to explore an area of entrepreneurship, fear will not allow you to go into it. You are comfortable where you are. The Bible says it is in the midst of your setback that you know you are about to rise. So that means kingdom economics is such that Every time you plunge into a depression, you are about to appreciate. So now that the economy is just going down and down and down, what is God saying? It's time for us to rise. But you see, it's a truth you have to accept. That's the reason why in Genesis 26, well, I think I'll do a teaching on this next week. In Genesis 26, the Bible says there was a famine in the land where Isaac dwelt. And Isaac was about to leave the land to go to another land in search of greener pastures. And I'm sure he learned that from his father Abraham. So because, you know, there was a time there was famine in the land. The land God promised Abraham and Abraham escaped. And I believe that was not God's plan. Because God brought him to that land and said, this is the land I will give you. As barren as it looks. As dry as that field of business is, that is the place God has planted your dominion. But you have to look beyond the current situation and believe what God is saying. Because what will make that wilderness a fruitful field is inside of you. God does not want to solve problem and bring you in. You have no relevance there. You have no relevance in an organization that doesn't have a problem that only you can solve. And if you know 
how to find his consign. Then you will realize that it is solving problems that exposes you to wealth. Not sitting down waiting for prophecy. It doesn't work like that. Are we here? So Isaac was about to escape, you know, which is the normal thing a lot of people will do. But God told him, no, 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 don't, don't repeat the mistake of your father. You know, sometimes we say generational curses. I think there are more of generational mindset than generational curses. If you do what your father did, you will get your father's result. The reason why your father's marriage was always shaking was because nobody taught him kingdom principles on how to establish a home. That except the Lord builds a house, not his wisdom that he learned from his father. So if your relationship now is having a problem, it's because you are indirectly and unconsciously doing the things he did when he was young. So I think instead of labeling it as generational curses, we should call it generational mindset. Something is wrong and there has to be a shift. If you don't change how you think, you will get the same result and inherit the same thing. And by the time it gets to your children, it becomes a stronger yoke on them. Meanwhile, the Bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his who? His children's children. So meaning that before God, you can say you are wealthy when your wealth extends to the second generation. My goodness. And I must get there before I get to heaven. Yes. So God told Isaac, stay in that land. This is the land I promised your father. He said, unto you and your seed. And the Bible says, Isaac stayed in that land. And in verse 12, or verse, from verse 11, 12 down, the Bible says, Isaac sowed in that land. Remember, it was a famine, not just dry season. Meaning that the rains had not come for a long time. And so I'm sure that when Isaac was tilling the ground, the Philistines would around and be laughing at him and be mocking him just can tell you resign from this job and start this business but because you are used to collecting salary and i did, i realized that no salary earner becomes wealthy go and check absolutely no salary earner you can become rich but never wealthy you know what wealth is when you have enough for a nation the bible says a little one shall become a thousand and a small one God doesn't want to give you wealth for just you and your family. I know what you plan. Me, my wife, and my two children will just build one three-bedroom flat and then two cars and we'll go. That's a poverty mindset. There, you, we, we can't sustain. If there, is, if there is famine in that city, there is nothing you can do. If United Nations begin to lack funds, you can't single-handedly go to them and make donations. Meanwhile, the promise is that you will lend to nations and not borrow. You see why before God gives us the money, he must change our mindset. Because money misroad is not somebody who spends lavishly. And there is no harm in spending lavishly if you have the money. I told one of my friends, I said, you've been stressed out recently. I said, you need to take out time to rest. And you know what you do? Shut down, go home, sleep in the evening, come out, go to where they buy ice cream. Tell them to lock the door for 30 minutes. Nobody is entering. Pay for the time. Buy ice cream, one of those pans. Even if you are not licking it, can you eat it and put it on your head and be walking outside? God punish poverty. God punish poverty. It's not waste. Somebody say, and the Bible says we should not which waste. If you are with me, say amen. Yeah. Um, this, I am speaking to people that will I believe. By the end of this conference, and as they continually allow God to transform their minds, you are about to receive a wealth that can carry the economy of a nation. I'm telling you, doesn't matter your background. If you can allow yourself to be transformed in this summit, something will shift. You will go back the same person physically, but they will not know that something has changed here. So the Bible says Isaac sold in that land. I'm sure they were laughing at him when he was doing that. But listen, Isaac sold because he had a promise. Isaac sold because he had a word. And this afternoon, while I was thinking on that scripture, God told me two things. Number one, God said opportunities are created when, we, when our need resonates with God's need. When our need resonates with God's need. You know why God blessed Isaac? 
God blessed Isaac not because he was the only righteous person there. No. But Isaac was carrying the ancestry that will give back to Jesus. So God was out to preserve Jesus from dying. Because if that famine kills Isaac before he gives back to his children, Jesus will not come. So opportunities will be created for you to explore wealth when your need resonates with God's need. Most times when we pray certain prayer in prayers, it looks like God is not answering us. You know why? Because you are, your need has not touched God's heart. God is asking, what is in this prayer for me? That's why we call it kingdom finances. There's no need for God to bless me. My money cannot do anything for the kingdom. As you are here nicely seated, everything, the sound you are hearing, everything you see costs money. Not anointing. Money. In fact, if you have money so much without anointing, very few people will know. Because when you come to the hall and the place is nice, I, well, I can't see that. Maybe you can bring it further. When you come to the hall, the place is nice, the sound is good, the worship team ministers so well, everything. You will not know that there is no Holy Spirit. You will feel that there is Holy Spirit. But it's easy to detect someone that has the anointing and doesn't have money. Because it becomes annoyance. So Isaac sold, and the Bible says God blessed him a hundredfold in the midst of famine. Number two, God told me that when we choose to wait on God and believe his promises, opportunities are created. Isaac sold because he heard something. God told him, this is the land I gave. And you know, the Bible says he began to prosper in verse 12. And he prospered and was very prosperous. Till the people that laughed up, uh, around him started envying him. And I believe that's what God wants to do. Amen. Amen. So, um, uh, in the talk shows, or in the talk show segment as we move into it, I want you to ensure that you get down your questions if you have. Please, ask reasonable questions. Huh? Ask reasonable questions. If I see that the question is not reasonable, I will not read it. Say amen. Mm, the interview is me. Um, I'm the one, you know, anchoring the interview. Say amen. Yes. So ushers will please, um, when we start the segment, um, if you have a question, you signal to the ushers. They'll be able to get you a piece of paper. So you write your question and then send it. Okay? Because of time, we will not take open questions. So make sure you write your question on a piece of paper and send it to them. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Bible says God blessed Isaac. I believe that God wants to bring about an end time solution to the demon that is called poverty. I believe that poverty is a demon. Watch out for our teaching next week. I want to talk to you about the definition of poverty. I want to show you something God showed me. Amen. The Bible says that before the end come, the gospel will be preached. Is that true? So we owe God a mandate that whilst we are still here, the gospel must get to the ends of the earth. Our generation has no excuse to give God for why the gospel of the kingdom was not preached. And if you are seated here under the sound of my voice or you are following us online, God is counting on you as a kingdom agent that will bring about a revolution of wealth. It's not about whether you are called into it or not. No. It's about God raising us as an army. When the Bible says God is raising an army, it's not talking about guns and bombs. Money can do beyond what guns and bombs can do. Are we together? And that's the reason why we want to take time to explore that this um, summit. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So please help me with that, those papers. Thank you. Amen. All right. So we'll move into the interview session quickly. Um, we have, we are going to have about six of us for the sake of the interview. They are our guests, but they are our brethren, actually. Say amen. amen. Now, God inspired me to bring up these guys because of the level of results and excellence I've seen in the area of entrepreneurship in their life. And one of my mentors will always say, 
that don't trivialize results. If you see someone that has results, then something is at work. A principle or a law has been mastered. Are we together? Yes. So six of them are here, and um, I will call them out and then introduce them before we begin. How many of us are ready? Are you sure? Good. So please, um, while they get the stage ready, like I said, if you have any question in the course of the interview, you ensure that you write it down, signal the ushers, they should be able to get you a piece of paper, so you write it down. No, you don't retire. Keep playing. It's part of the interview. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Next week, um, next week we'll close with one more session. And uh, frankly speaking, there is so much I wanted to share. So much. So that it could take us seven days. But I think what will happen is, when we are done with Kephas... If God permits, before the end of the year, we may bring up a series on finance. Out of the many things I would love to share with us, God encountered me during the first phase of the lockdown. Uh, that, that was around April. And in that encounter, God shared with me seven dimensions of kingdom wealth transfer that will happen to the church. When I wrote it down, I had to spend two, three days praying on it. Because I had been reading the Bible and I never saw it this way. As a matter of fact, when I started applying one of them, it started working immediately. So that you know that it's not only when you sell tomato that you will make money. The Bible says that the wealth of the hidden is a promise for the end time. Will be laid in stock for the sons of the kingdom. So... I pray that God will allow me before the end of this year. That's why you can't miss any pneumatic meeting. We start a series on that. I want to share, if God doesn't allow me to share the seven, I want to share at least three for you. Seven major ways. But first of all, we'll talk about the two sides, the two dimensions of kingdom wealth transfer. Because this wealth we are talking about is currently under the control of an evil system called Babylon. That's the system that makes you work 8 to 5 and you don't have time for weekly activities. And by the time you do that work for one year, your prayer life has dropped by 60%. You do that work for three years, you don't even know whether you are a believer. You'll be coming out for every altar call. So you see that if we allow ourselves to be enslaved by the system of the world, we may lose our salvation and we may still not end up as, you know, in financial dominion. So God showed me two sides of this wealth transfer that we have been saying. And then he showed me seven powerful secrets. I don't think I'll share the seven. Maybe just three. So I believe, I trust, I pray God will help me to be able to, before the year runs out, for us to have that series. And if you believe that that will happen, say amen. 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 Can we put our hands together? Amen. See, they got thrown for me, so let me sit down on the throne. <laughs> Amen. Now, we are believing God as a ministry. One of our, the mandates God has given to us is around media. And so, as a ministry, we deploy a lot of our resources in the area of media. Uh, we are believing God that we will have a TV station. Um, yes. Yes. We are also believing God. I said it one time and I'm saying it again. We are believing God that we will also have a world class studio. All right? Yes. Because with the wake of COVID 19, you don't know what can happen again. I think that we are just blessed by God that we can still gather like this. There are nations for the last one year, they've never had this kind of meeting. So we don't have to wait for another pandemic to hit. We must prepare. Amen? Yeah. So that's the reason why we are going to invest in many media outlets, especially having a world-class studio, so that the gospel can reach ends of the earth where, uh, or countries where seemingly re- Christianity is forbidden as a religion. I told us last week, 
that in the last 30 days, we had just on audio mark, our messages downloaded just on audio mark were from over 25 nations. Nations like United Kingdom, nations like South Africa, even nations like Haiti. What? You know Haiti? Uh huh. Amen? So you see that it's going very far. And that's the reason why we need to deploy as much resources as we can into these things and trust God to help us drive the gospel. Amen? Say after me, my life will advance the kingdom. My life will be spent in the furtherance of the gospel. Let me tell you something. That's the only investment that can never fail. If you spend your life for the gospel, even if you die, you are sure that there are others that will still carry it on. The Bible says it is the only thing that we can do and get the reward here and in heaven. And I believe that God is raising an army here. If you are with me, say amen. amen. So one day, this set you are seeing is going to be a world-class studio. Amen. Yes, amen. All right. So I'll call out the six um, entrepreneurs and they will take their seats before me and then we can begin the interview. Are we ready? Yes. Um, number one, we have our brother Emmanuel Obute. Please celebrate them as they come. Our sister Comfort Stephen. Please celebrate her. Amen. Bro Emmanuel Obute is the CEO of Maverick Media. He is a media and communications consultant. Amen. And uh, Sister Comfort Stephen is also the CEO and managing director of Sparkle Ultimate and Comfort Classic Wears. I I think that clap is very good. God bless you. So what a man can do, a woman can. So be challenged there. We have our brother Kelvin Atani. Yeah, please celebrate him. But Kelvin Atani is uh, an established entrepreneur. He's also the CEO of Kenry's Global Services. Yeah. I know many of you know Kenry's. Say amen. Yes, go and do your t-shirts there. And every computer work you can think of. Um, we have one of our pastors who will be joining us, Pastor Daniel Pindar Wakawa. God bless you. Pastor Daniel was with the humanitarian sector, but now he's the MD and CEO of Dawapin Enterprises. Amen? So you get to know more about him later. Amen. With his masters in view. And he's happily married. <laughs> Amen. You see, I'm so privileged to have these people. Um, number five, we have Bro Bamanga Pinda, our brother from the prayer department. He is the managing director and CEO of Bamira Nigeria Limited. I, I believe that's it, Bamira, right? All right. Bamira Nigeria Limited is a conglomerate of companies. They have a laundry service. They have, I think, a construction outlet as well. Yes. And also they are into agriculture. Amen. That's the laundry service that, that, that does my laundry. How many of you like the way I look? Amen. Yes, um, he read computer engineering, and I believe you are on your master's now. Good. Can we celebrate God for that? That's good. Amen. Sorry, I, I, I forgot to talk about uh, the first two people I brought up. Sister Comfort is also doing a master's now, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, you are processing on it. And um, um, Bro Emmanuel has a degree in media and... La, la? Okay, library and information science, yes. Then number six, last but not the least, we have Brother Lukman Uma. CEO of Lukman Fresh Dynasty. He's an established entrepreneur. And I have to tell you, 
um, in the area of agriculture, what this young man is doing, the biggest of its kind in this city. Yeah. Amen. I don't know, maybe, maybe you will grant them a discussion, a tour on your... <laughs> Amen. He's doing a very major work around agriculture, like our brother, uh, Brother Manga as well. Amen. So please, as the interview goes on, make sure you get your questions on the sheets of paper. I will receive them and take the ones we can take because of our time. And we trust God to help us in Jesus' name. So are we happy? Are we set? All right. So once again, uh, we are all welcome. Thank you for joining me on this set. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just go straight to the questions because of our time. I would like to start with Brother Emmanuel Obute. Okay, the first question is with you. And um, I believe that at the end of the questions, we'll give each of them at least a minute or two to just say something to encourage us, um, especially those of us that are trusting God to enter into entrepreneurship. Amen? And God will help us in Jesus' name. Um, Brother Emmanuel Obute, I've known you for a while. You were working with a non-governmental organization, right? Yes. And then you resigned. A well-paid job. You resigned and started Maverick Media. I know Maverick Media had been on, but you resigned to face that. So I would like to ask, what was your reason for that? I felt that because of your job, you had what they call security, job security. You know, you, they were not sacked, you were not retrenched. So I would want to know your reason for that. Or what opportunity did you see in what you are doing now that will make you forfeit a well-paid job? Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, why did I resign? I, I resigned because working with the organization I was yes. with was not in line with the vision I had for my life. Wow. wow. Uh, wow. I think I was, I was 16 when I first ventured into business. Wow. And I've, I've, <laughs> 16. Yes, I opened a provision store on our streets. Hallelujah. I mean, <laughs> hallelujah. Yes. And I, I, I knew that the kind of person I am and the kind of vision and ideas I have in my head, I would not be able to fulfill the vision if I was working with any organization. Yes. I knew I, I was going to be on my own. But yes. the reason why I resigned is I, I realized that time is not on my side. Wow. I, I intend to build a legacy, something mm. that will outlive me, and the sooner the better, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I felt like it's enough of uh, being afraid, enough of uh, playing safe. Mm -hmm. And so I just launched in, you know, with both feet. W were, you, were you scared at any time of making that decision? Yes, I, w I was worried. I, you know, Maverick Media was was not fully developed at that time yes. and uh, the amount of money that we get in fact it's where, where I work that I get money to invest in Maverick mm -hmm. and so I, I thought that what if I I now stop working and then you know the amount of money coming in because as of then I already had two people that were fully dependent on Maverick wow and so for me to now bring myself on board to depend fully on me on because what, what I was saying there was sustaining every one of us. Wow. So now can Maverick sustain us all? Yes. But, you know, I spoke with you, I think, during the time, and you remember? Amen. <laughs> and I, I believe that Maverick will grow faster if I am fully invested in it. That was one of the securities I had. Wow. That I, I have more time to do more. Yes. And there's always room to you know do more. Yes. I was scared, of course I was, but I think we we we, we live by faith, right? Not so, by sight. Thank you very side. much. Please celebrate him for that. That that is that is wow, amen. And that's why you should partner with us too. We are also part of business. When you have gotten everything, come for laying of hands. 
Amen. All right, the next question is to Sister Comfort Stephen, um, who is actually the only woman among five men. Amen. Ladies, I thought you'd clap for that. Uh, yes. Um, well, I've known you, Ma, for some time. Uh, I've heard your story, and I'm grateful to God for what he's doing with you. Now, I remember you told me you started your business while you were a student. And you started with nothing. You actually even started with someone else's money. Tell us how from that you have grown into owning different enterprises. Tell us how and why. Weren't you, of course, in addition to that, I mean, we are living in a society that is still trying to stabilize gender equality. So, were you not afraid that it wouldn't work for you as a woman? So tell us how you were able to venture into that and why you were convinced to go into that. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I want to start by saying this. Uh, people said uh, they are strong sometimes. And what I understand about that statement is sometimes people don't really desire or wish to become strong. But situation and time make one to become strong. It's not really what one desired. So I started my business while I was in my... I started business a long time ago, as far as I can remember. But I got established while I was in my part four. It all began while I was traveling to Lagos. So I have those... Were you traveling by air or by road? Sorry. I was traveling by, by road. road. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. So you know that it was not a comfortable thing. Go ahead, my dear. Yeah, I remember there was a time our car got spoiled. We have to stay like three days. Some persons that have money took another box to Lagos, but I have to stay because I know yeah, my no pocket way. as a business person. So um, I started by... I visited first, uh, sorry, Diamond Bank. Because as an entrepreneur, you don't have to wait for the ground to be watered. You have to water it yourself. So I went to First Bank. Sorry, Diamond. I met some people. We became friends with them. So I was about to travel to Lagos during those period of time. Meanwhile, (laughs) this is another story for another day. Sometimes I would travel without money. I will take a leap of, of faith. If I have transport, of course, I will travel. So I'm if, not the only one. <laughs> I travel without money. Don't try it if you don't have faith. <laughs> Go ahead, my dear. So, but when people discover that, ah, they call you, where are you? Of course, I'm in Lagos. Can you help me get this? They will send their money. I'll use your money to buy the item, and I'll still make gain out of it. So I told those persons that yeah, I was that's, traveling. You, you should clap for that. Using someone else's money to produce your own capital. Go ahead, man. So I told this person that I was traveling to Lagos. So the person now said, okay, please, can you help me get suits? I know nothing about suits. I said, yes, of course. I will get suits for you. But you have to give me a down payment of so-so a month. When I bring it, you complete it. So as God is ordering my steps, because it's not just ordinary. Yes. I, this is another confirmation. I served in FCS. So two of the brethren in the ESCO's committee we are like, I needed a suit. Help me get a suit. So that was how I knew it wasn't a coincidence. Suit is not something I knew. Of course, it's had to do with material. It's not a normal cloth that you just purchased anyhow because you felt you know material. So I now said, yes, I can. But you have to give me a down payment. I went to Lagos. I make inquiry. You, you collected a down payment, not even having the suit or being sure that you were going to deliver to them. Yes, sir. I knew nothing wow. about suit. So I... She, now, now, I want to point something out there. Sorry. She knew nothing about what she was getting into, but she was confident because she knew it would force her to study or to find out about it. Do we get that? Okay, now you, you got to Lagos. All right, no, go ahead. So I got those items. When I came back, I 
gave it to them. I actually realized that there's school money on it. Gain in it, yes. Yes, so I was like, okay. <laughs> and I went to my Facebook. I posted suits. I said, if you want to buy suits, you can make the down payments of 10,000 naira. On arrival, you pay me 8,000. Sincerely speaking, I didn't start at my business with money. So when people say that you need capital to start a business, it's not always true. Capital is very important. But what you need, you need idea, an idea that you have to work on. Idea alone is not enough. So I, so I started posting stuff like that on Facebook. I started getting people that are interested. I bring it down from Lagos and... I show them I made money. All, so all let right, me. Now I will cut you there and ask one more. And the question is why? Now you've explained to us how. So the question is why? And the why is because you are a woman. Like I said, we are living in a, a sub-Saharan region where uh, we are still trying to stabilize gender equality. Women sometimes have been taught to feel they are second class or there are things they can't do. It was risky traveling from here to Lagos. There are so many things you risked, like accidents on the road, like armed robbery, and all of that. It looked like a situation only men could survive in. But why did you see an opportunity there and venture into it? Okay. Like I said before I started seeing anything else, I said people don't always desire to be strong. Mm. Sometimes situation and your surrounding make you to become strong. Mm. So I am a kind of person that from the onset I want to be a value adding woman to my generation. Hallelujah. I yes. don't because yes. I realize that there are more to achieve in life than just like I supposed to say earlier that just being married, having kids and I believe God placed that in me. Of course it's not ordinary. God placed that in me. And for the challenge in the society, well, for women that are into business, of course, there's a lot of challenges. Like, people, like for me personally, the challenges is when I sell things sometimes on credit, people take advantage of me. They take advantage of my gender. Because I notice I have one major customer I have. When he collects things from me, it will take him time to pay me money. But when he wants to buy something, he goes somewhere else and buys it in cash. And if at all he's buying on credit, he pays, he pays in time. But mine will take like months, close to a year before he paid me. Because so, he feels you're a woman. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how was I able to overcome him, this challenge? I made him understand that this is what I want this is who I am. This is where I'm going to. How? I recently, we just resolved the issue with him. I met him. I went to his office. I met him and I summoned the courage. courage. I spoke yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't like what you're doing. He said, yes, comfort. We brought you up. I know how you started. So you don't neglect your customers. I said, sir, the fact that you are patronizing me doesn't mean you should break me. Because some customers are actually dangerous. They are not a plus but a minus. I can do with or without you. So the, the key He's a very great person. But I talk to him. I don't just... I sent messages. It's not working. I try reported, reporting him to people I know that can talk to him. That did not also work because man is very stubborn. So, but I summoned the coach. I sent him one message last two weeks. I said, sir, if I want to get my money today, today, I will get it. But I won't do that to you. Why? Because of the grace of God upon your life, not because of you as a person. So the key word is courage. You yes. exercise courage. Courage, and yes. that's what has given you a foothold yes. in your established field. Please, can we celebrate God for that? That's a very, that's a virtue you need. Amen. Especially if you are a woman. Amen. Um, the next question, thank you very much, man. The next question is to Brother Kelvin Atani. I call him KK. Amen. He's a CEO. Forget all those KK things. He's a CEO. Now, you started as an artist. 
Okay? You will just draw and then display. And according to your story, because I've known you for a while, um, it wasn't lucrative at the start. Um, today, you do many other things which have become different streams of income. So I want you to tell us how one can explore other fields of businesses or other enterprises aside from the initial one that he or she is doing. How, how can one, briefly, and what does it take to be able to venture into other enterprises and then be able to create that multiple um, um, stream of income? Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, it's a nice question, actually. Um, for me, I started my business in university about, I, I think, February 2013. February 2013. Yes. That's February. how many years now? How many? That's eight, eight years now. Wonderful. February 2013. So, um, just straight to the point, like you said. Yes. I was actually drawing. Yes. So let me just give a very short story. Praise the Lord. Maybe to encourage somebody. Of course. One day I was at my studio. I was waiting for a customer. So I was just sitting down. While I was waiting, someone came into my studio and he was like, What do you do here? I told him, I'm an artist. He looked at me. He laughed. He said, You don't even look like an artist. What do you have here to show me that you are an artist? No painting, no that's 2013. No sketching, nothing, nothing. This just looks like I'm an empty shop. You don't, don't call yourself an artist. Mm -hmm. And you walked out. That was a heavy blow. <laughs> All right. Go but on. I took the blow mm -hmm. as stones to build myself. Wow. Now, wow. to say something very important. As a business person, sometimes you need to accept critics as part of the secret you need to establish your business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When that man told me that, up to today, I've never seen him in my life. Again. <laughs> Again. I told myself, I'll live my life to prove this man wrong. From that day, I started practicing how to sketch. And let me tell you very well, up to today, nobody taught me how to sketch a human being. Hmm. I stayed late night, hours, drawing, it will not be good drawing, it will not be good, keep drawing, but I keep telling myself I'll get it. Wow. The first person, I, the first paint, uh, sketching I made that gave me the image of a human being was Bishop David Oedipo, and I still have this sketching up to now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I think Just, I've seen that sketching, and I think the next one will be me now. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah go ahead, sir. <laughs> so, the day I did that sketching, I was so happy. I took it to church. I was showing my choir members. See, I used to sketch. If you want to sketch, come. I was showing everybody. I took it to a house. I kept it in front of the TV. And thank God for my father. No matter what you do, he sees it like nothing. He feels you've not even started anything yet. Mm. So when I went home, I was very happy. So me and my mom, we have a very good relationship. We just we talk. So I was, he was happy. Yeah, wow, this is fine. So because me and my dad don't really, really rap like that, I now kept the, the, the sketching in front of the television so that once he just enter, he will see it. So when he entered, he saw it. He didn't say anything. It was just this. No, I tell him, my mom was expecting him to say, oh, what is this? He didn't say anything. So my mom said, I see your son. <laughs> this, this, he now said, his reply was now, eh, it's fine now. No matter how he does it, it's, this is not yet his best. Hmm. So that thing just made me feel I've not started anything. And I went back to my drawing board and I kept on practicing. That was another blow you took as a building stone yes. again. Yeah. Wow. Go so, ahead, so moving into other parts of business, I do lots of other things because to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to have more than one source of income to sustain you. Mm -hmm. Because business is, life is full of challenges, and business is also full of challenges. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a particular business can give you psychological trauma. Mm -hmm. You may want to give up. You want, you feel like you can't continue anymore, but. You have to just be passionate about what you do. And one thing about me is I'm someone who does business for the passion. Wow. I don't do it for money. That's why even if, some, if somebody owes me money, I don't even disturb myself. I'm not too disturbed. Because my own life is to render services to make, to keep a legacy. In my own field of business. Because 
what I'm doing, so many other people too are doing it, but I st I'm still working very, very hard to be the best Amen. in my own level. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Can we clap for that? <laughs> now, you notice, you notice one word from the three of them. Each of them spoke about doing what they do to create a legacy. So it's beyond just making money. It's about how you can contribute to society. What mark will you leave that your generation will remember you for? I think when that becomes your passion, it is easy to keep on the job when there is no money. I think that's good. Thank you very much, sir. Um, now to Brother Manga and Brother Lukman. Amen. The agricultural moguls. I mean, you need, to, you need to visit their farms. You need to take... I believe you'll be able to meet them after now, get their contact, go on a tour. You will never believe the things that are grown there can be grown in Meiduguri. I'm telling you. Amen? And so if you have a mind of entering that field, you, 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 I think you can meet them. Now, I have one question for the two of you. So I will take Brabamanga first, then Brolukma. Okay? In two minutes. Must I practice what I studied? That's question one. Then question two. What can you say about exploring new grounds of entrepreneurship or places people are afraid to tread? It's quite similar to his question, but it's different. In the sense of um, you are trying to explore a new ground of entrepreneurship that has not been harnessed or um, is not harnessed by many people. For instance, what the two of you have in common, which is agriculture. So question number one again, must I practice what I studied? I'm asking this question because both of you are from the field of engineering by reason of your study. So I don't know how we connect wire and agriculture. Amen. So if you are there or you are watching us or you are listening to us and you think after studying and get a degree, I must get a job with that degree. Here are two engineers. And they have taken their wire and battery to the farm. And they are doing well. So that's why the question. So must I practice what I studied? And what can you say about exploring new grounds of entrepreneurship? Grounds that people fear to tread. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Must I practice what I study? Most of the time we, we study things we don't even have passion for. Yes. And... As an yeah. entrepreneur, two things is it, you must have a desire first, then an ability. That desire is what I call passion. Then the ability is the skill you need to be able to start up, to run, and to manage a business for profit sake, not minding the challenges around you. So for me, I studied computer engineering, and I'm still studying. But I grew up practically on a farm. And because my dad, he was also a government worker. But I don't know when he started poultry because I grew up, I opened my eye and I was poultry. So I grew up basically on a farm. Hallelujah. So we grew up with that, with that desire, with that passion, and the skills in managing the farm, especially when it comes to layers for egg production. So it's not necessary what you study. You know, when this program was set up, I was thinking, and this thing flashed my mind. What do you think when you see a Fulani boy in the bush going after cattle? cattle? Me, sometimes I just say, just sell them now. It's like 10 million, 20 million. But he has a passion because he grew up seeing his father do it. Many of us have skills in us, potential in us that we have, that we grew up with, that we could actually convert into something good and productive, to even do more than our parents have done. Maximizing potential. But <laughs> we ahead. keep it aside, trying to chase other things or trying to... All I'm trying to say is there are things that are inbuilt, maybe by virtue of how long you have stayed in it. So it is not always about what you study. It is about entrepreneurship, it is about passion. 
like my brother said, at the age of 16, he had passion to go into business. Mm. And he knew that job he was doing will not be able to what? To allow him do that thing he has passion for. So for that question, I would say it is not always about what you study, but you check also your area of passion. And it may take time. It may take, it may take long time for you to be able to realize that thing that you actually want to do. If you meet Lukman, he will say, when he showed me something, even me, I was saying, ah, <laughs> in Medugui, he said, yes, in Medugui. Yes. We were chatting on Monday. So when you have a desire, you have a passion, you can push it through. Amen. And it's not always about what you study. study. Amen. Can we celebrate God for that? <laughs> now, thank you so much, sir. I thought to direct the second question to Bro Lukman. Amen. Uh, Bro Lukman is one of the largest in this city, and I believe in this state, is one of the largest vegetable farmers that you have around. Vegetables that you don't think can be grown in Beduguri is doing it. In fact, I think once or twice we've discussed and he has shared with me methods by which they can grow crops that should take four or five months, methods that they can deploy to make it grow in one, two months, right? In the midst of this dry land. So that's why I want to direct the other question to him because I know his course of study was in the line of engineering. So to answer that question, how do you explore entrepreneurship on new grounds from your experience? How were you able to jump and you are doing well in this? Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like all everyone has rightly said, for you to start, it's the first thing there is passion and desire. I actually have this mind on controlling the prices of food stuff in the market. Did you hear? I, sorry, sir. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> Not just producing a price, controlling the prices. Please, you can celebrate God for that. That's that's a dominion mindset. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. So if you look at uh, the highly nutritious vegetables we have, most of them are not grown in this town. So I now took it upon the challenge. To grow this crop, what do you need? What do you need? Then that was when studies came in. Uh, I think mm -hmm. if you're going to break a new ground, you should get in contact with people who are there or look for light in the sense that study. Praise get, the Lord. Get knowledge. Yes. Because I... There was this night that I sat down making researches. I think one of the folders I, I downloaded stuff on material was ranging to almost 7 gig. And I was like, what? But before I knew it, I was able to cover up these areas. And one or two connections, the Bible says, lines are falling to me in pleasant places. So as I began to make studies, then I discovered that the connections were coming in all around. But the major thing was study. That was what God was telling me. In fact... Sometimes I even hear it in my ear, take this aspect and study it, take this aspect and study it. And when the study was being done, it was now time to move into practice. Challenges were abound, but we started. Now we are able to grow from ogu crop, from ogu plants. We moved to strawberries. We've moved to apples wow. and some wonderful crops like that. I, I think... Now that we have strawberries grown in Medugri, we need to pray for God to put an idea in somebody that can convert that strawberry crop to juice or ice cream. Yeah. If you said yes, God will place that idea on you. Yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, Pastor Dan, finally, on this note, uh, before the questions come, I still have one, two questions for the first three of our, uh, our participants. This is Kingdom Finances and Entrepreneurship Summit. And I've often had people say, Kingdom Financier, Kingdom Financier. Who, sir, is a Kingdom Financier? Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. A Kingdom Financier is someone that uses the resources that is available to him to support the work of the kingdom. Yeah. That's all. Can you clap for that? 
I thought I was going to hear a long sermon. Simple. What you have, use it to support the kingdom. I know some people didn't agree with that. If you didn't agree with that, it's the spirit of stinginess that is disagreeing in you. That must be casted out. Amen. I'm just joking. Okay, I have a question here that I want... Um, I want Bro Kelvin to answer this question. How do you bounce back after hitting rock bottom? In other words, of course, I, I know you understand that. You failed. You told us your story just now. How do you bounce back? In, let's say, 30 seconds. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whenever you fall, try to fall, making your face face up. Because when you face up, it means there's hope to get up. Now, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, success is intentional. They don't, nobody needs to inspire you. You look for inspiration in situations. Yeah. Hallelujah. No, I'm talking about myself because recently I, I, I came to understand that sometimes you just need to leave things for God to do. Because for me in business, I don't see disappointment, setbacks as, as failures. I see them as lessons. And those lessons, if you pay keen interest in them, you're going to understand that they are stepping stones to your greatness. You must just come across them. Business is not a straight route. Straight, it's a lie. Anybody that tells you you can just make it overnight. The other day I said, if you can just make it overnight, we are ritually. <laughs> it's not possible. You need to tell yeah. somebody something. Yeah. How did you come this far? Yes. I have been disappointed several times. I have, I, have, I have hit the rock bottom several times. But you see, if you know where you are going to, you will never be discouraged. Except you don't have where you are going to. I know where my vision is taking me to. I know at a particular point in time in my life, I know where I want to be. I know what I want to achieve. So, when I face disappointment, I calm down and analyze the situation very well. Sometimes you discover that your success is even in that disappointment. It has happened to me before. So the, the, the summary of the whole thing is when you fall, try facing the upward direction. There's hope. How can I make you understand that clearly? When you are disappointed, don't be sober. Don't look for encouragement somewhere else. A businessman doesn't need anybody to encourage him. If you cannot encourage yourself, you can't move. That is just the truth. You have to be the resource for your motivation. That is me. If you, if, you, if, you, if you intimidate me, if you disappoint me, hmm, you are wasting your time. Because if I come back for you, you'll be surprised. Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> the Lord. He said, if you fall, fall with your face up. So that when you stand up, there's something to look up to. And you just add to what he said. Um, in as much as you must be your own motivation. As believers, we know that we can do all things true. Christ. So even if you can't look at yourself, there is a Christ in you that gives you hope. Are we together? Thank you very much, sir. The questions are so much. Good God Almighty. Say amen. So, but I think I will just ask a few. I want us to be done with this in the next five, ten minutes. Amen. Um, I have one question here I want to ask. Okay, yes. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Maverick, that's um, Brother Emmanuel Obute. I want him to answer that question. And then I have another question for... Okay, this will be for Kelvin, Brother Kelvin, and then Sister Comfort as well. This question says... this is from somebody in the auditorium, in the congregation. He says, the lack of financial discipline has swallowed a lot of business. Maybe you should have had my business, whoever wrote that. <laughs> Amen. 
How can an entrepreneur cultivate the habit of financial discipline? It's for you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, I think the spirit is one because when uh, the question uh, when they asked Kelvin that question, uh, he said that when you're falling down, make sure you fall facing up. And uh, once you stand up, look around you, check what made you fall. Hallelujah. Because if you don't do that, you, it will make you fall again. Yeah. And then you keep falling and become the righteous, keep falling and going off. <laughs> wow, Hallelujah. Yes, now, one of the stones that will make you fall is financial indiscipline. If you don't manage your finances, there is no way. There is no way you're going to grow. There's no way you're going to expand. I, I, I don't believe that the kind of person I am, uh, I think... I, a lot of things that I work with, I imbibed them when I was a teenager. I read a book by Anthony Robbins. Two books, or should I say three books that changed my life. I would recommend it to you. Number one, the Bible. <laughs> Are you writing it down? You should write that down. Number two, sir, go ahead. Number two, Awaken the Giant Within by Anthony Robbins. And then number three, Seven High Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen, Stephen Covey. Covey. Now, yes, what I read was Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens by Shane Covey, that's Stephen Covey's son. Now, uh, Anthony Robbins shared the concept of what he called CANI, C-A-N-I, constant and never-ending improvement. As a human being, in whatsoever field of endeavor, you must be committed to constant and never-ending improvement. What that means is that you must be better than you were yesterday. And if you're going to be better than you were yesterday, it means that you must make more resources that were available to you yesterday available today. Now, if, uh, you know, the Bible says that it's God who gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower, but no money comes to your hand with the label bread and another one, seed. You decide what is bread, you decide what is seed. Hallelujah. Yes. And so, as you, as you become, as, as finances come for you in business, I believe that, okay, good, another important book, if you really want to know a lot about uh, Managing finances, try as much as possible to read The Richest Man in Babylon. By George it's Classen. another book. It's another book. I, I read the book every year. I have books I read every year and I must just read them. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. So uh, I, 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 I realize at the point, I'll, I'll just speak from experience on from how we, my, we work at Maverick. So uh, my, my, colleague, my colleagues and I, my friends and I, I call them friends. We, we realized that for us to be able to survive December last year, we will need a new camera. The orders are coming, and most of the time, uh, we should be able to cover, my vision is we should be able to cover four or five weddings in, on the same day, without stress, and we should have the tools available. So what we decided to do is that, I think at that point, we, 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 we came up about and we, we created another different account. We, we had an account that uh, was opened, and we ensured that at least 50% of every money that comes in will go into the account. And God helping us, we did that for like, I think, two or three months, and we were able to purchase the new cameras and the equipment that we need. And of course, it was coming towards the end of the year, had to pay rent for studio, pay rent for that, and all that. The level of savings, you must save as an entrepreneur. That's, that's, that, thing that's thing. the fact. You cannot, yes. you, can, you cannot do without saving. Yes. And so, but there's a, a very interesting way I like to save. I like to save by investing. Because, I, you know, with some of us, it's a weakness and it's a strength also. For example, if, if I have money with me, say I have 200,000 there, and it's sitting down in my account, I promise you, I will see a need, maybe mine, maybe not mine, of 200,000 naira. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I will meet it mm -hmm. by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyway, pastor can just stand up and be like, you know, my rent is 200,000 naira. It has not come. And I have faith. It is going to go. There is nothing that will stop you from going. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So I like to save by investing. investing. That is how I save. Uh, if I have 50,000 naira now, I think what's can I, I use with 50,000 naira in my studio and I purchase it and keep? I have saved it. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I don't have the discipline to tell people that are in need, especially when it comes to the kingdom, to say no. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, but then, of course, you still have to have some form of savings. It depends on how it works for you. Uh, someone preached 
a, a message to us the other day, and he said he grew up with his, in a farm with his dad, and the dad, whenever they harvest the crops, he removes the one he wants to sow in the next uh, rainy season. If you want to die, die. If you want to kill yourself, kill yourself. Hunger will kill people all in the house before he touches the one he saved. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we celebrate but then, God for that? Sorry, there's one. Okay, now, and then if, yeah. another very practical way of saving now, because I, I believe in the use of technology, uh, we have CUDA banking. Hallelujah. I don't know if you know about it. Now you can lock up money there. And that is what my friend and my, my, my colleague and I are doing. I tell them that, hey, I don't want to access this money until two years. Even if you want to die. They won't give you the money. I promise you, they, there is nothing you will do that they will release the money. Mm-hmm. Uh, could download the app. You can open the account right now. Kuda, Kuda Bank, and you can request for an ATM. They will bring you to your place of work. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Kuda. Kuda is spelled K U U D A. Yeah, I've seen that app before. Please celebrate God for that. So, learn to save, learn to invest. And let me add this one manage your appetite if you want to save. You guys will not believe that throughout this week, today was the first time I carried cash. Since Monday, I've had no cash on me. Yeah. So if you want to say, I'm not saying be stingy, I'm just saying manage your appetite. The truth is, aside from transportation, when I pass around the ice cream shop, they didn't, I don't believe they make it for me. They made it for people who don't know what to do with their money. Amen. Invest also in your mind too. I'm just adding to what he said. And you know, he spoke about laying up some money somewhere until a particular time. I would also add to that, um, if you are, that's kind of like fixed deposit, but you know, a little different. So if you do that kind of saving, don't touch it until you have an idea for what to invest that money on. Is that good? Thank you very much, sir, for that. Now, this question is to Sister Comfort. I, I decided to target you with this question. Because I've been struggling with laughing here. The person said, How do I manage sustainability in terms of hike in price of product? Things don't cost. <laughs> so how do I still keep the business going with that? Very briefly. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How do I manage a market price? I assumed. Oh, from during COVID till now, the market has not been stable. You buy things today, tomorrow the price is different. So what we do is, this is business-wise. Those, some people is drunk. But for instance, if I have a goods in my shop, and probably I purchase that goods for the amount of 10,000 euro, and meanwhile the goods have added up in the market to 12,000, that's buying price. So, even though I bought that goods for 10,000 euro, if I'm selling it, I should sell it for 12,000 euro. Sorry. The current price is 12,000. Maybe I'm selling for 15,000, including my profits. So, now that the item currently is 12,000 in the market, I should sell it to 70,000, even though it's the old goods. Having it in mind that I'm still going to use the same money and go back to market and purchase it. Thank you. Just to keep your customer base. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank you. Brother Lukman, would you like to say something to that? Because you, you are the one who controls the price now. <laughs> so would you like to add something to that? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, like, even in doing the farm operations, most especially these few days, with the increment in fuel, most especially, in, what, the advert, what will have really work for us is an inventory. You stock up. You make calculations not just for immediate um, farm operations or businesses. Actually, I'm um, into farm, so you don't. You will have to have a store. But what we do is we store up stuff. So we store up seed. We store up all everything that we need at the start. Then, whenever the crisis of prices comes up, what we just, what we normally experience or have in the farm is we have more profit rather than. Problems of not being, having to be that they are the one controlling the price, <laughs> <laughs> and just like of recent, the basket of tomatoes and onions that we sell, 
our farm, the produce from the farm was still cheaper than what they sell in the market because we, this increase in price and increase in transport didn't really affect us that much. So it would be better that if you're stocking, you stock ahead and you walk ahead. And one of the secrets is still the Holy Spirit because before these things should happen, I think before the fuel, increase in fuel, I was being directed to get this um, fuel in large quantity, which I don't normally do. And two days after, I was hearing that prices in, of fuel has increased and all these things. So the Holy Spirit is there, but always work ahead of time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please celebrate God for that. You cannot separate the Holy Spirit from that. He inspires you, gives you ideas as well to prepare ahead of time. And then, you know, to add to what he said, I think it's also good if you can have a way of purchasing from the manufacturers, if it's possible. At least the price hike will not be like it is when you are going on retail or wholesale. Right? Thank you very much. Um, still on you, sir. I want, I want you, this is the last question, I would want you, uh, Bromba Manga and Pastor Dan to talk about. I wanted to dodge this question, but I had to just read it. The person said, okay, okay, not this one. I'm the one that can undo this one. I'll read it out for us. Um, Uh-huh. He said, please, my question is, how do you handle exhaustion? Okay, I want you, I want Mr. Kelvin and uh, Pastor Dan to handle this question. I want the three of you to ans- answer very briefly this question. The person said, please, my question is, how do you handle exhaustion in business? And also, yeah, okay, before breaking a new ground, you have answered that. I think you answered that and then so I think the question is how do you handle exhaustion in business? Tire, you don't tire. How do you handle that? How do you get how do you keep the business going, battling with the issue of exhaustion? How can you manage exhaustion? So let's let's start with uh, you, sir. Then I'll I'll we'll also go to Mr. Kelvin and Pastor Dan. Briefly, thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think I will have to refer back to my civil engineering knowledge. Yeah. Uh, if you're building a structure, you have to have a blueprint. The architect has to design a model for you. Now, even when you're tired or you don't have money, you have a drawing, plan, a drawing board to go back to and a blueprint to go back to. So whenever you're tired and exhausted, of which you will be, actually, people are around, situations are around. In fact, the market itself sometimes will make you be exhausted, but what's your passion? What is it that you want to achieve? What's the result? Like you had most of our colleagues here, some of them want to build legacies. Most of us want to control the market. So if that's your game and you're doing it with the aim that you're doing this for the kingdom, I think even though when the exhaustion should come, you should say that you can do all things through Christ. And you have to find a way, just like our brother said, you have to find a way to encourage yourself once in a while, you, nobody is there to encourage In fact, I have not gotten, gotten any form of encouragement from any mortal except of recent. The, the Lord has been using one or two people to come and lay words and say what's concerning the business. But to encourage, I think that's one of the hardest things to get. What you get is people who criticize you, put you down, write you off. But that passion that you have for that business has to be there. The desire has to be there and couple with the Holy Spirit. All right. Thank you, sir. Your passion can sustain you in times of exhaustion. Um, Mr. Kelvin, because I know you work a lot. You work a lot. I think in this place, it's only me and you that have the same structure. Amen. So, and very hardworking at that. So, how do you, you, how do you handle exhaustion, sir? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just is, just a simple sentence. We don't stop when we are tired. We stop when we are done. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Apostle, let me just give, give you a little example so that it won't be as if I'm just the one talking. I don't work because I, I don't work because of the money. Money is important, but I work because of my passion. I have worked before from 6 a.m. 
with one of my staff. I think we are about three. We walked for 22 hours because we we're calculating the time. Wow. I don't get tired though. I don't know if you if you have where you are going to, I don't think there's anything tiredness should do to your body. Passion, like bro, look man said, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. If you have something that drives you, if you have a passion for what you are doing, I think tiredness should not be in your library. I don't have tiredness in my library. So because it, at the end of the day, when we die, we leave the flesh here now. Yeah. So you, you don't you don't stop when you are tired, you stop, stop when, when you are done. Clap for him, please. Hallelujah. That's a wonderful one. Pastor that you. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Uh, initially, when the idea of establishing of a company came up, actually we succeeded. We registered the company. Amen. But the major challenge here was on how to start the business properly because we do financial transaction. And the truth of the matter, if you don't have certain amount of money, you can't venture into that. Mm. And to God be the glory, I so much respect a value integrity. Because the Bible said, the integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Businessman is quoting by... Something me. happened far back in the university. Yes, when sir. I was in 500 level, I think, my cousin was into this business. It, it was during cold. You know how cold used to be in Medigri. Mm. So he ordered hand gloves, socks, and he now made me and asked me to please help him and take it to the faculty. So I took it to my faculty, and to God be the glory, it was I sold them all for him, and I returned the money to him. I didn't touch a dime. So prior, before he met me, that he now met some people and, and gave it to them. They sold it and he couldn't even see them. So I, I, I never knew that and I did will speak for me one day. When I opened the company, we got into discussion. Now he now told me that he's going to link me up to somebody. And believe me, you, the man he links up with, the first transaction we did in that company was 30 million era transaction without a single cobo. And we, we paid thought, the I thought you, beneficiary. You claim it. I thought you would claim it. <laughs> so we... we All we, right, sir. Now, now, because of time, I want to direct... Because you, you also answered one of the questions I didn't ask. You spoke about integrity, virtue. And somebody asked a question close to that. Now, you are a CEO. You have people working under you on your payroll. How do you handle exhaustion? Because I have an idea of your kind of work. You guys can be on the field for days. So, and you're a married man too. So, how do you handle stress, exhaustion? <laughs> Sir, to God be the glory, God has been so faithful and His grace is sufficient upon us. Amen. So, He always helps us out. <laughs> Seriously. He said, God will always help you out. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for that. Now, I'll add to what they've said. They've spoken very well. You know, passion will drive you. The reason why I didn't answer first is because I'm also a, a, you know, a victim of that. I can, be, I can stress myself out. But then, as much as you can, try to plan your rest. I did a video on that this year. You can check our YouTube channel. Try to plan your rest. Like Mr. Kelvin said, you don't stop when you are tired. You stop when you are done. Now that you are done, did you plan a good schedule for you to relax? Amen. So thank you very much sir, for that, sirs. Um, I want to ask this question to Mr. Maverick, and I believe it will be the last question. Somebody asked a question here. Yeah. Well, quite a number of them, but I want to pick one. He said, how... Okay, here it is. How is God glorified in your business? Yes, please, can, can he have one of mine? Thank you. Yes. How is God glorified in your business? Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, something happened to me this year. Uh, my friends and I, we just uh, escorted our general overseer to... We just escorted our general overseer to the airport. And we were driving out. Then one Benz came and passed us. I didn't know when I started speaking in tongues. <laughs> That's it. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when I was speaking in tongues, I, I said to myself, I said, if... Your level. I, I'm sure is, they were capital letter tongues, not small letter. <laughs> the type you know, that can claim. Go ahead, sir. Hallelujah. <laughs> it means that 
that I, I would, the, the, what I inferred from the whole experience because it was an involuntary thing. It says, you know, the Bible says that uh, let your light so shine before uh, men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that wherever that guy is, right, he has, uh, he has caused me to pray. I don't know who he is, but he has caused me to pray by the level of success that he has achieved. And it's something I aspire to. Now, coming to the question of how do we glorify God with your work, there's a problem I have seen with the church and with individuals. Yes. We tend to leave whatever we are outside when we enter the church. Your security, maybe your police officer and your policing job ends at the gate of the church. I am a media and communications personnel. I believe that you should come to church with your profession. I believe that the church needs your profession. First, yes. Sir. First, actually. Mm -hmm. So if you are a police officer, there's no reason why you shouldn't be in the security department in church. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If you're an accountant, you don't have any Some of excuse. you will find you. I know some of you will find you. <laughs> if you're an accountant, you don't have any reason not to handle the accounting department okay. of the church. Yes, sir. Now, a lot of people think I'm a photographer. I am not a photographer. I'm a media and communications consultant. I do with I deal with public relations and branding. Yes, Hallelujah. Hmm. Which church in Medjugorje has a better media and communications output than Wisdom Chapel? I dare you. Ask, I, 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 name the church. Hallelujah. Hmm. That's by, his church, by the way. <laughs> yes. Right. By, the, by the grace of God. The skills and uh, things that I have acquired out there working, I bring it to church and I use it here too. If you go on Twitter, you'll find a summary of every sermon preached on this altar from December 2018. Wow. I showed you one the other yes, day. Yes. And I believe that even the media department in, uh, in yes, SGNI, yeah. we work hand in hand and we, we, we do some things. Amen. Amen. Now, how is God glorified in your business? This is one way, Right? The skills and whatever you develop, you bring it into the church. And then secondly, especially me, I'm uh, into photography and uh, videography and all that. And there is a, there is a, is it a stereotype now? There's a stereotype mm. that they, a cliche. that they have for photographers. Mm. It's not any more matter. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. But I stand on the grace of God. Yes. If I've tossed any one of you here, or you know. <laughs> Open confession. Please celebrate God for him. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah. I, I practice the profession, and I show that it's not all uh, photographers that are doing that. It's not all of us that do that. We are mm. showing the light in that aspect. Yes. And of course, Integrity. you don't see me taking pictures of new do men out there. Yes. We don't, we don't, we don't promote, we don't promote the work of darkness with our craft. Hallelujah! Thank you very much for that. Thank you, sir. So deploy your skill and your profession in the service of the Lord. Be a person of integrity, and don't do or get involved in anything that is opposed to your faith. That's wonderful. You know, I want us to close in five minutes, if you will spare me. But while you were talking. I felt the Holy Spirit inspiring me that everybody will have to at least 30 seconds to one minute talk about that. How do you glorify God in your business? He has already answered, but I just want each and every, each of them to contribute to that in the next five minutes and we're done. So I think we'll pass the mic like that down to Mr. Kelvin. Over to you, ma'am. Yes. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. I was watching an interview on Facebook. Uh, the founder of uh, Epis. He said, uh, why, before he started his aircraft business, he had the passion that he wants to create employment. Yes, he wants to make money, but his first priority was to create employment for youth in Nigeria. So when he went to, I think, one of the countries outside there, he spoke uh, with the major dealer there. So they now said, okay, uh, they are going to give him that uh, ball. The man now said something to the dealer. He said he wanted something 
that can add uh, employment to the youth in his country in Nigeria. So the man now said that since he was into this business, that no black man have come here and spoke about the interests of his people. So when he got those plane, he now realized that this plane was for just charter. During those period of time, that was a long time ago, and you make a lot of money from chartering plane. So when he learned that, he got angry in his spirit. He said that's not what he wants. He wants something that 20 people or more can work at a spot so that he will create joy, job employment to people. So this is not what he wants. He went back. He said with little amount he was able to purchase uh, the plane he wanted enough and he's the biggest dealer in that aspect in Nigeria because nobody has started that business with such amount of plane he had. Why? Because he wanted people to have the job. So when you want God to be glorified, it's not just always about you. It's not just always about you. Do you aspect should be in terms of developing yourself to become capable so that people can drink from your well? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Celebrate God for that. Very quickly, so that people can be employed. All right. Very quickly now, bro. Look, man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55 verse 1 says, Ho, everyone that trusted, come ye to the waters, and he that had no money, come ye, buy and eat, come ye buy wine and milk without money and without price. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. While I was staying in 202, I normally go out for this morning walks. I just walk, trying to speak in today and see what's up. Then I discovered that if you check out all these stores, these shops, you see homeless people sitting down. As in, you meet these almagers and some IDP displaced, internet displaced people without food. And if you give some of them just a little token of 20 naira, it's like you have given them something huge. So with that, I came up with the, that desire. That, I think that's what God used to build up that desire in me to go and see how you make food available to every and every, each individual that's on the streets. So, and second of all, second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16, it says, the Lord of peace will give you peace always and by all means. Mm -hmm. Looking at Meduguri, Meduguri is the home of peace. Yeah. Our God is the Lord of peace. So indirectly, Meduguri is the home of our Lord. Yes. So we are the children of peace. And if you look at Psalm 127, where it says the children will attack the enemies at the gate. So I don't know if you're connecting the dot. The children of peace, we are supposed to bring our peace to this land. We're supposed to march to the enemies of the enemies at the gates, proclaiming the peace of Christ. I think with that in your heart, with that as your focus, I don't think there will be room for exhaustion because the work is bigger than you. And with that, you will be able to give it all. And you will see go the uh, heavenly Glorify. parkings and mm. everything. Praise the Lord. So putting food on someone's table and then using business as a medium to transact peace. Business is actually one of the only things that brings people from different religious and cultural background. Amen. Okay, very quickly, very quickly now. Let's just speed up. Hallelujah. Over to you, sir. Yes. I think me and the Greek man were in the same spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> I met him first on an onions farm. You know, Isaiah 58 wow. 12 says, Those that will come from you will be the repairers of the bridge, yeah. the restorers of paths mm. to dwell in. Mm. So if your focus for getting wealth is that men will be blessed and men will be imparted, that lives of men will change, then God will be glorified. In your business. You and Thank Zechariah 117, so he says, Cry yet, thus says the Lord, that my city through prosperity, prosperity shall, shall be spread. spread abroad. One thing also is that you have to have the kingdom of God at hand. If you read down Zechariah chapter 1, you see that it talks about four carpenters, four horns first that destroyed Jerusalem, Israel, and Judah, and another four. Four carpenters came and he asked God, What is this? He said, These are those that you want to free them. If you subscribe to being a carpenter, I speak in parables, then you glorify God in your business. Hallelujah. So God is glorified when your business becomes a tool for deliverance. I told you, poverty is a demon. 
and we need to crush the head of that demon in these last days. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, in my own case, it's a divine arrangement. Uh, years ago, God revealed to me, I saw myself taking our neighbors to church. And to God be the glory with the neighbor of uh, Job I found myself doing, I noticed we are surrounded by them. We dibos- The disbursement we do mostly, we give it to them. So, and to God be the glory, I decided to use that as an avenue, an opportunity to, to preach the gospel. Yes. So, I met one of them in the camp. We discussed, and he said so many things to me regarding his family members that are living in Niger. They are on the other side. So, prayerfully, we trust God together, and we decided to invade the camp. And to God be the glory, single-handedly, one sponsored that trip. One don't need to say that, but I'm saying that for the sake of the, for the, the for, for the conference. Yes. And to God be the glory, when we got there, a lot of them accepted Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And aside that, there is this particular woman too. She's from the other faith. She accepted Christ. And things are not moving well with her. So what I did, I decided to use my own office to God be the glory and pay voice for her so every month she receives a stipend and it encourages her. Hallelujah. My God. Did you hear what he said? You see, I've said it before that if you look beyond yourself God will see the reason for why he should give you the resources of a nation. Amen. Stop of you who didn't understand what he was saying. By neighbors he was talking about Islam. You understand? That one person, because he has financial capacity, can sponsor a mission trip to another land. And we are going back there this year, sometime this year. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, lastly with you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. For me, um, what I do is, for the gift God has given me in my life, if you ask anybody, that has ever met me before to teach him this thing I'm doing I've never asked anybody for money before hmm. and even when some people come to ask how much I say all I need is just your passion hmm. in fact recently there's a lady her elder brother brought her I think 2019 if I could remember to come and be learning some of these things Amen. to go be the now and pay her his own salary Amen. now what I'm just trying to say is I told God I will give the knowledge. You can never pay me. That's freely. my principle. You can never pay for the knowledge I will give you. Because freely you have received, freely you give. That is just my policy. Thank you very much. Can we celebrate God for all of them? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, um, I wish we had time. Okay? I wish we had time. I've loved to hear so much more from them. You saw them quoting scriptures. Many people think the moment you enter into business, you are backslidden. No. These are kingdom, very spiritual people. I know them. One of them spoke about reading. I've been to, I've been to the house of some of them here. They have libraries. In fact, I used to borrow some books from Mrs. Com- Miss Comfort. Me. I used to borrow books from her. So you see that it's beyond just making money. God is building you as a system by which the kingdom can find relevance. Amen. So once again, I want to thank every one of them for their time and the opportunity to have them on this platform to share their experience with as many. And uh, we had an agreement with them. We couldn't ask all the questions, but we have an agreement with them that we are going to set up a hub um, primarily on social media so that you can interact with them. More of these questions will be answered there and then you can get to be able to talk with them one-on-one. And those of you who need mentorship, maybe you are going into a field of business that is related to theirs, or whichever, and you just need guidance, you need mentorship, you will be able to reach them. I think that's good. Isn't it? And it's... Amen. Don't go there and ask them for money, sir. Okay. Aha. And he spoke about registering a company. All of them here, you see, their companies are registered. At least one or two may be in the process. So if you have the mind of registering your business name or company which is needed in Nigeria now, 
you can see them you can meet them either after now or on that platform amen that and many other questions can be answered and they'll be able to provide you good and qualitative mentorship the kingdom style amen so please can we clap up for them one more time okay yes Okay, okay, okay. He said he had something to say. Let me just give him a minute. Is, is that okay? I know we are out of time, but let me just give him a minute. Uh, let's hear what he has to say to us. After that, I'll take a photograph with them, and they'll sit down, and then we'll close. Is that okay? As, as the privilege of being the guest or the host, I'll take a photograph with them. No other person. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, sorry for keeping you beyond the time. I just feel like, there's a mistake that we, a lot of us make in church. Yeah. Uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus was coming down, Peter asked him, why did they say then Elijah, uh, Elijah must come first? And Jesus said to them, he said, Elijah has come, and they have done to him what they did to all the other prophets. And then we have a set of people now that are still waiting for Jesus to come. Hallelujah. Mm. Uh, opportunities. Uh, uh, I want to recommend one more book. Uh, yes. It's called The $100 Startup. Opportunities come every day. Business opportunities come every day. Yeah. And you just have to open your eyes to see them. Don't just assume, or you have to think beyond the traditional ways of doing business. Yes. You know, I checked some materials before coming. You know, some of you are so spiritual, you're, you're not on TikTok, you're, you're not on Instagram, you're, you don't care about YouTube. But a nine year old boy, I think his name is Raj, also, he earned $29.5 million from YouTube alone last year. Nine year old. He's nine years old. And all he does is he just do review of toys on YouTube. And then there's another lady, she's 18, and she just dropped out of school. She earned $5 million from TikTok last year. Hallelujah. Mm. I believe that every new technology and every new thing that comes up is a business opportunity for you. Yes. The world is moving uh, in a direction where we don't see human beings and business opportunity and the concepts of space and time have changed. People are no longer delineated by geographical locations but philosophies. Hallelujah. Yes. And so you must tend to learn or should I say give yourself out to knowing how to maximize because we spoke about maximizing opportunity, okay. maximizing potentials, maximize social media. If you have, if on your WhatsApp status you have up to 500 people that view your status daily and you're able to get 10 more people and that's a total of 5,000. Please, sir, if I can assure you that I can advertise your product to 5,000 people daily, will you pay me 10,000 naira to do that? He said he will. Hallelujah. Many of us are sitting on land mines, sorry, on, uh, on gold mines, and you just don't know. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Think of business beyond normal production. Think of services that you are going to offer. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much. They just struck a business deal. You don't know. They just struck deal. You see how business people talk? I think I'll, that was a very powerful one. You, if you see beyond your need to the needs of others, opportunities are created. And our God is, is vast and lavish in giving ideas. Amen. Can we celebrate God for them one more time? Thank you very much. Thank you, Saz and Mark. I think we can take a group photograph before they go, right? Mm -hmm.